time for the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife UK Basketball Post Game Show on ESPN 680 and 1057. Coverage of Wildcats basketball is also presented by Ale 81, Kentucky's original ginger soft drink since 1926. Kelly, Kentucky, the employment solution expert, kellyjobs.com. UPS Jobs, apply today at upsjobsky.com. Cox's Spirit Shop and Evergreen Liquors, Louisville's neighborhood liquor store. Genesis Diamonds, the official jeweler of the Kentucky Wildcats. BJ Heating and Cooling, call the experts you can trust. BJHeatCool.com. Sonatrol Security, the number one rated security company in Louisville. SonatrolKY.com and Kroger, fresh for everyone. Now, here are your hosts, Mike Gandolfo, Jason Entz, and Zach Cantrell. All right, Cats fans, uh, big win for Kentucky tonight. I'm Mike Gandolfo. The Cats go down to the Plains and knock off Bruce Pearl and the Auburn Tigers 70-59. to No team has gone on to Auburn this year and won. No team has gone on to Auburn this year and even got within 11 points of the Auburn Tigers. This, to me, is the most impressive win of the season for the Cats. I am not sitting here and saying, hey, I'm not that guy. We're not going to be doom and gloom and then all of a sudden one game, this team's going to the Final Four. But I think a lot happened tonight where this team uh, just showed that they can play with anybody when they have when uh, they commit on the defensive end because that was a huge piece. When they commit to being physical, when they uh, decide to share the basketball, uh, they didn't have a huge offensive output, you know, 70 points for them. But holding Auburn under 59 points when I think they were averaging like 89 points. I think everybody and their mother thought that this game was going to hit the over. And uh, Kentucky – Gets it done tonight, 70 to 59. We are on ESPN Louisville Plus tonight, so we're streaming on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. So here's how you can interact with the show tonight. Number one, the text line is open. So if you want to send us a text, again, that number is the UPI, UPS Jobs text line 437-9680 is the number. That text line is, o- is open. Uh, Justin is uh, monitoring that for me. Uh, Zach is actually got to run the Bellman game, and that's why we're not on the air. Uh, it's a tough, it's a tough matchup for me tonight, honestly. Justin, Scotty Some... D, who I know and love, mm-hmm. taking on EKU, who is coached by AW Hamilton, who uh, has coached in the Derby Classic, and is a guy that I know and love. Is what I consider a friend. Uh, Luke Hancock's high school coach, if you want to go that far back, yep. you know, Terry Rozier and uh, uh, and. Um, uh, and Antoine Gill, you know that's a name for the past for UVL fans. Well, <laughs> Antoine all Gil. both play for a little Antoine Gill, who I thought was going to be a stud of UVL. So uh, right now, AW is getting the better of Scotty D, and uh, they're winning that game. Uh, Louisville gets crushed tonight, and Justin's got to sit through Louisville getting crushed, which he's actually <laughs> happy about. But he's got to listen to you. As don't tell Kentucky people. Fans don't tell people that. Don't tell them that. No, you tell you're them happy th- about wait, it. I know it's true. That, it's true. Here, let me just. I'm sorry. Two seconds of the UK post game just to say, yeah, I am happy about it. I do want it to happen. I don't want to ki- this to continue. There will be people that get mad at me and fill their diaper because I am cheering against Louisville this season. Yeah, I am. I'm sorry. I can't do this again. Go ahead. Now <laughs> back to Kentucky. Sorry. Back. Listen, to you all. just Have come over to the blue side. Come over to the blue side. Uh, we're going to make the tournament. We might not get out of the first weekend, <laughs> but we're going to make the tournament. So, uh, you know, to me, coupled with what happened in the Ole Miss performance, this is it's promising for Kentucky. Uh, it shows that they might be maybe turning a little bit of a corner. Okay, uh, now they dug themselves a hole at the same time. I'm not exactly sure where they can end up seed wise. I do think that probably five six is probably still the best that they can do. Uh, but you know what? They're in play for. They're still in play for the buys in the SEC tournament uh, tonight. Definitely helps. They've they did something that I don't think anybody thought that they could do. Uh, they were double digits underdogs going into Auburn, and really for them to go down there and and I just kind of want to take this game basically from the jump because yeah. I think every Kentucky fan knew that for for them to have a chance tonight they had to get off to a good start. That's been an issue at Kentucky. They've not gotten off to good starts, and right off the bat we score Justin Edwards. Uh, scores off a turnover. They turn so that they're able to turn Auburn over. They're able to get a bucket, but they really dominated that first bit of the game. At the uh, you know eleven two was the score at the at the fourteen twenty seven mark, 
And I think that's when they went to the first under 16 time. I know I was a little bit earlier than that, but they got they went on an 11 2 run to start the game, really controlling the pace, really controlling the game, really controlling the narrative, playing physical. And this is the first time that we've seen Kentucky play physical without Trey Mitchell on the floor. And, and so there's another big bonus right there. Uh, Ugana in, uh, was huge tonight, even though he didn't block a ton of shots. He was still, his presence was just looming the whole time. Uh, and then Kentucky was able to keep it around a 10 point game for most of the first half. I thought one of the most interesting kind of stretches for Kentucky actually was right around before the under 12 timeout. Uh, uh, Onyenzo was such a big part. So it's it's 12 to 5. Kentucky's up 13 minutes left to go. 13 12 left to go in the first half. Uh, Cal's going to rest Onyenzo mainly because, and I love this move, by the way. I love this. Sub if Cal gets, I Cal, and including me, gets just, just drilled for his substitution uh, patterns. And I just want to say this one makes a ton of sense. We know Onyenzo. Has, is when he's fresh, he's a whole different player than when he starts to drag a little bit. So you got 13-12, and you know that you can get this guy a minute 12 rest uh, up until whenever the under-12 timeout happens, and then you get that prolonged break. So I love the substitution there, but Auburn immediately starts hammering the ball down underneath the basket, gets two quick scores, cuts the score to four, 13-9, but then that's when D.J. Wagner... Gets a huge play. The Cats force a turnover. Antonio Reeves hits a three. Antonio Reeves tonight. We're going to get into him a little bit more in the second half. But that right there, that little stretch that got them to the under-12 timeout, then they were able to get Onyenzo back in. Uh, Kentucky had Auburn with, at the eight-minute mark, Auburn had only had 10 points. And this is, a, again, a team that is averaging like 89 points a game. And it's a whole different team at home than they are on the road. They've been one of the best home basketball teams. Uh, them and UConn, I, I think you'd have to say, are probably the two best teams at home this year. And, you know, again, Kentucky able to mix in some zone tonight, which I know a lot of people wanted to see, uh, but really committed to their defensive positioning. I think that was the real key. They played with some, uh, some physicality, committed to being in the right position. And a lot of good things happen. Reed Shepard getting steals with his hands just again because he was in the right position. Cats able to hold on going into halftime with a 29 to 39 lead. Uh, so everything looks good. And then I think if you're a Kentucky fan and you remember the Kansas game, you're like, okay, well, there's going to be this run that Auburn goes on in the middle of the second half, somewhere kind of mid second half. And they did. Auburn goes on a run, cuts the score down to five. And uh, down to 47-42, Cal calls timeout. And then out of that timeout, Antonio Reeves decides to just go off. And he scores nine of Kentucky's next 11 points. Um, he had every single one of Kentucky's field goals. The other ones were a duth arrow free throws. And, I mean, I don't know if I could just talk about how amazing – Antonio Reeves was tonight and how because he was so big in moments when Kentucky had to have him okay his we've seen him be more efficient this season he was eight for 20 so that's not like it not set the world on fire from a shooting percentage wise three for six from the three-point line three out of five actually missing two free throws tonight when he's been just ice cold from the free throw I mean I'm sorry just when I mean cold I mean he's like been like butter he's just been making all his free throws 22 points for Antonio Reeves tonight, though, and he just, when Kentucky needed something, he was the answer. And a uh, big, big game for Reeves, big game for Thierro with 14. Uh, just a great performance for him, getting the starting nod when they decided that Trey Mitchell could not go in this ball game tonight. So uh, the other double-digit score tonight was Rob Dillingham with 11. We saw the good and the bad with Rob Dillingham tonight. He had He did have four turnovers. He ended up having four fouls. We had... We had one cat foul out. Justin Edwards fouls out, and just a crappy call. Uh, but Reeves with four fouls, uh, Yenzo with four. Uh, I'm sorry, Dillingham with four fouls, and a whole bunch of cats with three. But listen, I'm okay with that if it's that's what it's going to take, like for them to play be a little bit more physical. And we needed to see them play uh, with a whole lot more physicality. Uh, Yenzo with 11 rebounds tonight to lead the Cats. He did have two blocks. Reed Shepard five steals in 30 minutes. Uh, but again, the story is Antonio Reese, who was 
had the best plus minus on the team with a 14. Dillingham was the second best with 12. Everyone else was in single digits. And just, uh, I was loving it. So, uh, great job there by the Cats. We want to hear what you think. This is how you can interact. Leave us a Facebook comment. Leave us a Twitter comment. Or go to the text line, 437-9680. Anything there yet? Uh, anybody, we got anything um, there, Justin? Because so I can't far, see anything. So far on the text line, the only thing I'm seeing uh, is I don't love Cal, but haters can suck it. So, people are, <laughs> are celebrating pretty hard. Uh, the Cal listen, I'm, I'm probably tonight. a Cal. I, they probably would. Most people would. I know Louie would. Louie would, would label me as a Cal hater. I'm not really a Cal hater. I just I want Kentucky to win. I want there's a standard that Kentucky should have, and yeah. uh, and that's what I expect for them to live up to. And like three home losses, for example. Did, and did you lo- catch- losing games when you score 85 is not a not a Cal is not a Kentucky standard. No, did you did you catch the video I put out by chance? <laughs> Um, on this channel, by the way, guys, if you're watching right now, if you're if it's Twitter, um, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it is, go to the YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. All that stuff really helps us to really grow this and really to bring you more and more content like this and more things in the future. Um, but I mean, Char- Charles saying I look like I've been smoking a green leafy <laughs> substance, which I've absolutely <laughs> never ever done before in my life. It's called uh, being unless it's tobacco. It's called being huh? tired. It's probably dead they, tired. is that what they're they're listen. I'm on. I'm. If you can't tell, I'm in a hotel room. I've been driving across the entire Northeast, doing some college visits with my son. We got in the uh, Saint X got out at two o'clock on Thursday. We hopped in the car, literally drove nine hours in snow to get up to Northern Pennsylvania, uh, so we could drive two hours the next day to go to see Lehigh, and then we went to Bucknell this morning, and now we're dri- we drove down to. Uh, the DC area. We're gonna look at a couple schools in the DC area tomorrow. So that's 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 my life right now. That's probably why I do look a little tired. Right? Yeah, it happens. But um, I'm still here for y'all. Come on, <laughs> let's go. But w- one of my points was, and what I was saying, because people were talking about the cowl issue, and I under- I understand. I completely get it because. I, I've done this as a, again. Sorry, I saw again, you say something that, that we I, don't want Cal to go or something. Like that. No, no. I, I, do you think after year after year of Louisville getting waxed by Cal Perry that I don't want to see him leave? I'm ready for him to go. Get out of here. But Strebel thought I was saying no. Whatever, y'all need to keep him. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is right now, look at look at the market. Are there a lot of good coaches out there that you're like really pining for to see Cal Perry leave for? Because I'm not as a Louisville fan right now who needs a good coach. We gotta get somebody. I, I don't know if there's really a lot of them that are really, you know, that are, that have me excited. Well, I mean, if I was a little fan, I'd tell you exactly who I'd go for right now, and it's not even close. Uh, I would go down to Florida, and I would get Golden out of Florida in a heartbeat, and he would be the dude. Yeah. And uh, he, to me, he was, he was the guy that if I was going to take an SEC coach, he'd be the guy that I would go take. There's no question, actually. You know, our, our that, um, the vice president has a has a. Has a saying about this. It, What's that? Are you saying if you're Louisville or if you're Kentucky? I would be if he ended up being at Kentucky. I would not be upset about it. Okay. Uh, but if you're Louisville, I think that's the guy that you'd want to go get. Okay. I mean, well, if we'll, you're, I mean, I, you we'll, definitely don't want Beard. I mean, I'm serious. And I'm, I'm, I'm I want Beard. I, if, I would if not. Any, I don't know. I don't why? understand the Beard love. Beard is like really <laughs> done it. nothing outside of one year. Uh, <sighs> I mean, he's not – I mean, listen, a lot of people would have hired Gates from Missouri last year after the one year, and now look what's happening going on now. He just got embarrassed about- against Kentucky and mm-hmm. when they when Ole Miss came to, to Rupp Arena. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, that kind of team that you saw roll out there is exactly yeah. what he's got. He, he started off with a really good year this year because he played nobody. So if you want Louisville to play nobody and yeah. get a whole bunch of wins early on and really suck in ACC play, yeah. go get Coach Beard. But and Musselman's he- the same. But yeah, yeah, Musselman does not excite me anymore, especially after this season. This is a rough one. Uh, the other name that's really out there is Tang, and the problem is like, yeah, Tang had a great season last season, and he beat Kentucky. I don't want to, don't do the Gillespie thing. I don't need to do the pick the guy who beats your rival. We don't, we don't need that. But, but like, Jerome Tang, Golden's the guy, man. But anyway, maybe, maybe Golden, maybe that's a name to keep an eye on. Should Calipari leave? I'll let you get back to. Oh, if, if Calipari, <laughs> Calipari's not leaving. First off, okay, that's not. I know it's not yeah. happening. My whole big take there is that just like. Uh, Cal Perry's been there longer than any other coach not named Adolph Rupp. And it's just, we're just to the point when you look at what's happened the last couple of years, it's not, it's not the standard that we've been up to. Now, if he wants to bring that program back to standard, which I think he's capable of doing, um, that then go for it. But it, that's not a, you know, that's, that's a game that is not at the, for the faint of heart, you know, 
I think there's a part of this where he gets a little he just got a little too comfortable and you know he gets a lifetime contract yep. and at the end of the day like it's just like we need we need to have a little more fire in that belly of someone who actually wants to go out there and win another one absolutely, um, absolutely. and really do the stuff that's going to take to win another one I mean there's there's you can be interested in winning the other one winning another one or you can be committed to it and right now I just don't think that Kentucky's committed as a can- as an overall program to win a number nine can I preface one question to you while we're on the Calipari future, whatever question or topic? A lot of I've heard a lot of UK fans throw out um, the name of Scott Drew, and my question to you all is: I think Scott Drew is a great co- coach. I think he's a tremendous coach. He's won a national title. Do you think yep. a- outside of if he would actually leave Baylor or not? Like I think Kentucky is yes, you probably would. But my question is: Do you think Kentucky fans would be patient enough? with him like do you, i don't think he can win at the clip as quickly as kentucky fans would want him to um you know right out the gate do you think you can well we have be i mean I, again we have a coach right now but if scott drew came to kentucky that would be that would be a totally acceptable choice thing i mean there's no question about it. i think he'd be a yeah. good choice out of the guys who are there right now i mean you're not can you get hurley and would hurley actually be a good fit here i mean Hurley. Is Danny Hurley not the best? Is Hurley not the best coach in college basketball right now? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I did you watch that game? Did you watch? Uh, I don't did know he, if you got to see any much of UConn, Marquette. I didn't today. see it, but when I saw the when he takes the number four team in the country, just completely takes their pants off Dude, and spanks I, them with a I, rubber hose. I hate UConn so much because of this, and I sound like Jason Ends right now because I have a cat meowing behind me. It's my wife. Sorry, uh, but, but anyway, you're, like you're, I. Your wife's cat or your wife is meowing? Which one is <laughs> my it? Wife's, my wife's cat. My wife's cat. She's got okay, two of them right. here. Um, they sneak in sometimes. Uh, but anyway, I watch watching that game and how I, I'm just so sick of UConn getting lucky into championships. It feels like, and I, what I mean, lucky, and I feel like the hire of dating her. I think he was great, great hire, but I didn't. I don't think anybody expected this when he first got hired at UConn. Well, I think that you could say that the Final Four last year was whatever it was. Uh, he still went into the tournament, and, and if you remember him going into the tournament last year, there was a lot of, uh, there were still a lot of people picking them as the dark horse to win it all at the beginning of the year. At the, I'm mean, not at the beginning of the year. I'm sorry, the beginning of March Madness, and he went out there and he did it, and he's proven this season in one of the toughest leagues in college basketball, which in the Big East is, it's probably the second hardest league in college basketball behind the SEC. And it might be harder than the SEC, actually. I think there's a – I mean, they're, they're both up there. That he is – he's got a he's got a program. He's dominant. He is not doing it with a lot of pro talent. Uh, he's doing it with some great toughness and college players and uh, and in a great system. And I think he brings a system that uh, – now, again, I don't think he ever comes here, right? This, But right. I think he is the kind of guy – like, that's the kind of uh, – that's I think that's what Kentucky fans want. Well, and you're now at the newest blue blood of all, like of, of the blue bloods. Like I, I, I guess it depends on how you determine blue blood. Like, can you only be a blue blood if your team won a lot like 60, 70 years ago? And, that, and that, that's the only time. No, because, like, UConn's, UConn's, a, UConn's is, on. If you've had more than one coach win a national title, I think that to me is the standard. Yep. So right. if and UConn's had three. I mean, UConn is 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 the seventh best college basketball program out there right now. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, and, they, and they're it's and they're battling it. They're battling probably Indiana to take over number six, the sixth spot. I agree. And I, and it's when you Actually, think I about, think, I kind of feel like they jumped Indiana at this point, just because of like they probably the, have the continued success in the time frame they've done it. It's a short time frame, but at the same time, it's been so consistent. But at the same time, Justin, I mean, as a Louisville fan who would have said that they were up there for a while, Louisville's time frame is not that much longer. I that's that's fair. I I do agree on that. Well, yeah, except for the the, the big gap between eighty six to twenty thirteen. That's a very long gap. Wow. Yeah. What, UCon- UConn's first was what ninety nine. Ninety. Is that when it was? Yeah, but they were they started really getting on the scene probably in like nineteen. I think it was nineteen ninety. I'm trying to remember when. I think it was Chris Smith had that last second shot in the NCAA tournament, and they were really. Uh, like kind of announced himself as like being a a national a problem on the national level, and then they didn't win the first one until ninety nine, uh, or was it two thousand? Was one, Duke won in two thousand? Um, was that right? I can't. Remember. It was. It's all yeah, I in think that area. Right. Michigan Indiana, State won yeah. in ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry, Kentucky won ninety eight. Michigan State won ninety nine. Maryland. So, uh, was it one? Maryland won in 03. 
Yeah, and I, I yeah, I need to go back. Oh no, oh three yeah. was Syracuse. Oh three is Syracuse. I know that one. No, Syracuse did not win oh three, did they? Yeah. Uh yeah, that was the Carmelo year, right? That was the year. That was Carmelo yeah. yeah. And O two was Bork, Maryland. Bork. Yeah, O two O two was Maryland. So oh two was, was Maryland. Okay. All yeah, right. There you go. There, there's your history, right. guys. <laughs> we we'll do a little bit of that. Um, uh, you know, off the top of my head, it's not bad. But I, I, yeah, I mean, I think overall, though, I mean, we're talking. We shouldn't even be talking about this. We should be talking about this basketball game because right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's, I, that's, that's no, I mean. mean, we can get off on it because I mean, it's hard when we don't have. Like, give me some more of the comments here so we can talk about this game. So we can talk about what happened. By the way, first half. One of the other numbers that really jumped out to me, besides how well I thought Kentucky did, even on the rebounding side tonight, uh, fifteen. They they led Auburn fifteen to zero points off turnovers at halftime. And I thought that was a huge, uh, just a, a big win for them. Overall, points off turnovers for the game. Uh, ended up, Cats ended up winning 23 to 10. Second chance points. Kentucky, this is, and I think second chance points is where they th that thought, most people thought Auburn would be a problem. Kentucky wins it 20 to 10. Uh, points in the paint. Again, Auburn is dominant down. Like, that's where they're, that's, that's where they're, you know, they got Broom and all these other guys. And Kentucky wins points in paint, thirty-six to twenty-six. Uh, I mean, it's a very impressive win today for the Cats. Yep, uh, a couple more texts that have come through, <laughs> and I'm not reading these comments, these Facebook comments. So if there's any there that jumps out of you, yeah, I'll, I'll pull so. some in there too as well. Uh, first one, I feel better knowing Mike is in a hotel room rather than a sad dad studio apartment. <laughs> sad dad studio apartment. I'm definitely in a hotel. My son is in the room with me. You know, so he's yeah. Do you weird. have the 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 divorce uh, divorcee look? Is that what they're saying? No. That you have the look. I hope the... not. I'm that that is <laughs> that is. I am 100 percent confident that that will never be my life. So um, yeah, not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, next one. Uh, need to give some love to Reed. Only scored four points, but had such a huge hand in this victory. Oh, I totally agree. He's I, just I totally got agree. That in control. Five rebounds, three assists, five steals. And you know there was a there's a Billy Donovan clip that he does this interview in this uh, what drives winning or something thing that I, I actually came across a couple years ago, but it's starting to hit Facebook and Instagram reels right now for whatever reason, and it talks about a player that he had that had a bad night, he played 38 minutes and only shot two for 11 from the field, and the kid was like moping in the locker room, and Billy Donovan and I and I, I'm saying this because I think Reed Shepard completely embodies this mindset like Reed could care less if he scores one point or if he scores 27 points he's going to impact the game no matter what and he's going to take what the defense gives him but the kid was like Billy was like you know how long does it take you to take a shot and the guy says about a second and he was like so you're going to let nine seconds of play determine how the rest of the 37 minutes and 51 seconds went of play of game time and the reality of it is Guys just don't have the ball in their hands as much as they think they do when they're out in the field on the floor. And it's really how do you how do you impact the game when you're not playing when you don't have the ball in your hands? How do you impact the game when you're not scoring? And Reed Shepard is that guy, you know, 100% Reed Shepard is that guy. So it's a great great comment by the texture. Talk about a saving like a saving grace for the season that Cal kind of. Held him hostage a little bit there last summer, <laughs> and then had him come back because Kentucky needed him. You talking about Reeves? Oh, yeah, yeah, Reeves, right? Isn't he? The yeah, well, yeah. Well, we were just talking about Reed uh, Shepherd. Oh, not you said Antonio Reed. Reed. Sorry, I, yeah, I, I'm multitasking. I apologize. I was going off. The uh, that's okay. That's all right. Reed, you know, Reed though with five rebounds tonight, uh, two assists, the, th the three steals. He had a couple of just. I'm sorry, five steals, and a couple of those steals were just in ginormous spots, and then some of them were even when they just. I, I'm very proud of this. I, I've been very critical of Cal about not taking anything away from the other team. And they started doubling down on Broom when he got the ball on the low block. And a lot of time that was Reed. And Reed, I think twice at least that I can think of, had steals out of those situations of just doubling down the post. Um, you know, I, I firmly believe that Kentucky doesn't have scouting reports that go over player tendencies or whatever because they switch everything and you can't know everybody's player tendency. So... Uh, tonight they looked like they actually game planned on defense, and it, it showed. I mean, I I've been critical of it, and so I need it when I when he goes out there and shows that they can do it. I'm gonna tip my hat and let you know. And now you've, and I think they've shown this when they were playing against teams that are gonna be top seeds in the tournament. They go out there and they play well. You need to go out and finish the job and win at LSU next on Tuesday because 
those bubble teams have been who's been uh, kind of biting them in the butt. And else you've got a big win today against South Carolina. So we got to make sure that that, uh, you know, that's the next piece here. Yeah. Are you able to read the comments that I put up on the screen? Like if I, if I, yeah, I got, if you tell me to look at it. So I see one. So really surprised Cal had the courage to leave Bradshaw on the bench the second half. Tough guys game tonight. And you know what? Uh, And we haven't seen Bradshaw. We saw Bradshaw try to be tough a couple games ago when he almost got in like a little bit of a skirmish. Uh, You know, got in someone's face. I can't remember who that was. It was against Mississippi State. I'm trying to remember who that was against. But, you know, Bradshaw, Bradshaw, everyone's been like banging on Edwards for not showing up. Bradshaw to me has just has been worse than Edwards in a lot of ways. So, um, you know, definitely disappointed out both those guys. We got a little bit of Edwards tonight before he fouled out. Um, but nothing, nothing out of Bradshaw. So um I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, I, I think when you got two other seven seven footers and he knew Cal, I think knew he had to go with Onyenzo. Onyenzo playing thirty six minutes tonight. Bradshaw plays three. Uh Big Z only gets one. And so there that's how you're and there's and there's no Trey Mitchell. They were gonna go with Onyenzo. They were gonna make it happen. And the thing I love about Onyenzo is that he does not he makes great post decisions. Three for three uh, from the field. He only has seven points. He knows his job's not out there to be a scorer. He's out there to block shots and to rebound. Gets us two blocks, gets us 11 rebounds, and calls it a day. So um, I loved it. 36, and it was a plus eight. So that's a, that's a great plus minus right there. Absolutely. Guys, right. reminder, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm sorry to do it, but I got to keep plugging. Uh, we'll bring you more and more content as we go. We're gonna listen. This this medium to me is the future of what the post game shows are. So I'm, yep. I'm, we're we're committed to doing this, and, I, and we like the fan interaction. We're gonna get it figured out so we can get you guys on the phone these things too. But uh, we're working on that right now. Why does the graphic show 27? He played 17 seconds more than. Oh, I got. Is that a U of L comment? No, it's. I don't even know. <laughs> no, it's why. Does, mm. Why does it show Big Z? I, you know, uh, I just thought it was funny. And all oh, I Big didn't... Z. Why does it show Big Z? Okay. And white guys are easy to cut out. <laughs> that's honestly it. That's, that's really it. But there you go. He's, okay. he's, he's celebrating his teammates. That's how bad this old man's eyesight is, is I can't really, like, even right. see. I thought it said 27. For a second, I did not know that was a zebra head oh. on the screen next to that man's head. Okay. Yeah, know. Justin's got a zebra. Why do you have a zebra on the screen there, Justin? Let's talk so about it real quick. Okay, so that's actually, I think I might have to read. Well, I, I still have association with it. I just don't do it very often. That's because of people, and I saw Ince, and maybe you, was that you responding as well about the Juve sucks thing? It's a uh, Juve. No, it was not. I was, I'm uh, not making soccer tweets. It's not uh, happening. Or soccer well, comments, no. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. When I could not said, tell you a single player who plays for Juventus. So. Uh, you know I know Lazio. Juventus. <laughs> I know who they are. I know they're great, but I'm not going to be able to tell you a single player. Yeah, Juve is my team, and that's uh, the logo of our Bianconeri Zone, the channel. Um, may have to, whenever we're doing the, the ESPN Little Plus stuff, maybe I'll throw a uh, – it'll be a derby horse. That's, that's what we'll say it is. We're going to throw some roses around it. There, there we go. All right. But anyway, um, and then <laughs> Nathan has to chime in. Dumbest convo ever. Cal should not and isn't close to being on the hot seat. Hot seat. He's still one of the best coaches in basketball. Is he? Is he? Is he? I mean, <sighs> I, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I, I agree that he's not close to being on the hot seat. I mean, I agree with that. I agree that Kentucky. I mean, we're in a situation where Cal's going to make his his decision when he's going to ride off into the sunset. That you're going to live with that no matter what. So uh, I do agree with that one hundred percent. I don't know if I would agree that he's one of the best coaches, and I think this season shows it now. Not given the last two games, which you know have been much better, but up until recently, you couldn't tell me that this team has gotten better. And this team was electric early on in the year. This team was magnificent in December. This team never should have lost, of course, to UNC uh, Wilmington when they did. Uh, that's a terrible loss. But then they looked completely unprepared going into conference play. And now the last two games, different story. And maybe that's to your point in saying that Cal still got it in him that he can still get it done, uh, but we got it. It's got to be consistently. It's got to be consistent. So I'm not going to sit here and uh, say that um, that I would still consider him one of the best coaches in college basketball right now. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying. Oh, to I guess that's not. I mean, I don't depends if you divide the number of coaches in half, the 300 and something coaches in half, and say is he in the top 150? Yes, he's in the top 150. You know, is he in the top five? I don't think so. 
Probably not right now. I think, uh, and I'm not, I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to do, I'm not trying to go straight to the, he's definitely probably one of the best recruiters in college basketball. And I think he's a great, I think he's a very good coach, but you're starting to see a little bit of the issues he have, has, especially when he doesn't have like an older guy, a couple of older guys, that backbone to really well, rely They got on. the older guys though. It, well, well, they got him this year. But do you, I mean, I guess. And Tony uh, Reese is but, 97 but, but, years but, old. But that's fair. That's fair. He is. But I guess does he have the personality to be to really like help lead these guys and really help them grow personally? Like, I, but I, I think would, that's what they had from Trey Mitchell early yeah. on. Mm-hmm. I think that that's kind of. I think that polish has come off a little bit on Trey Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually not shocked to see that this team can step up and play well. And I early on uh, in the I said Trey Mitchell was the glue. Trey Mitchell's the guy that's kind of getting these guys to play together and whatever else. The last little bit, I feel like we've seen a little bit of, and I don't know if he's been hurting or whatever, you know, but it just seems like a little bit of a different Trey Mitchell. So uh, I hope he comes back. I think Kentucky can be better with him. Uh, they obviously can't just have Onyenzo play 36 minutes the rest of the way. Uh, but so Trey Mitchell, and when he's passing the ball, when he's when he's able to play around the elbows, when he can step out and shoot some threes, I think that's when he, that's when Kentucky's at their best. So remind me of this: Has Cal ever had like a guy? Like, like, you know how, um, oh, why am I forgetting his name? You know, Rick always had his old guy on the bench. Uh, w- you know, um, Ralph Willard. He always had a Ralph yep. Willard on the bench. Has Cal ever really utilized that? Like, does he have? John guy- John Robick was his guy's name. Oh, yes. yes, yes. So and uh, the surfer like looking boy. Oh. You know, I think that, I think that in some ways, I think he thinks that Bruiser Flint or even Orlando Antigua, who I, I, I love Orlando Antigua, um, can be that guy uh but i i do think that potentially like john there's things that john robick was able to to do in in that seat that maybe those guys aren't equipped to do uh, at that time john uh, you know they could only have two assistants go recruit and john robick was not the assistant who would go recruit uh he was strictly the x and o guy but he was strictly the guy that growing up that had cal's ear in a certain way that I think he could say things to Cal. And, and I think you saw it, too. Um, the, to me, the most glaring episode, uh, uh, sign for when Rick didn't have it was when that, that those couple years of Louisville when he had his, just his boys. It was like him and Rick was coaching and maybe his his staff was like Bassiello, McCarty, yep. and and um, and Richard. That, like, and he 20, didn't 20, have that. 20, whatever. Yeah, that kind of and they were, stretch. And they were like. Losing to Cal in the first, they were dumb. Yeah, I mean, they, it was bad, right? <laughs> and I, you know, that's a that's a decent point. I mean, does does Cal need a John Robic type player or coach beside him? You know, I, I really, I don't know. I mean, he was there for a long time. He was there from two thousand nine to twenty twenty one, um, and it, so since John Robic's left, uh, Kentucky's not gotten out of the first weekend in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, go get you an old guy. That's all I'm saying. Get you an old guy. Who would that old guy be? Maybe Cal could go get Larry Brown. Yeah, yeah, but he's been he's he's been run. Okay, I don't want to say he's been run through a few times, but you know what I mean. Like you've already had him. Didn't he do that with? Is he's he, yeah, he's still with us, right? Did he just retired. Hey, retire? Yeah, because I know he, Larry Brown was uh, coaching at Memphis last year. So oh, was it just last year? Okay, yeah, I knew he was at Memphis I as an assistant. That, yeah, as an assistant, yeah, for Penny. So yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. I don't know why I thought he passed away like recently, but anyway. no. But I mean, there's something. I mean, you talk like uh, some of those some of those old basketball guys were just amazing. I could. I remember as a coach just like going to listen to Hubie Brown talk and I, I could sit there all day long, you know, I mean, it's a different level of X and O. So, uh, but I think from a game management standpoint, like, you know, uh, like people have been critical of Cal Perry of his usage of timeouts, for example, you know? Um, and when you're talking about usage of timeouts and usage of substitution patterns, a lot of that will fall on the co- head coach. But a lot of that has to do with how good your staff is and how well the staff has the ear of the head coach. Um, you know, when I was coaching at Spalding, uh, it got to the point where the head coach, where Charlie Just, I was coaching the girl, the women, shouldn't say the girls. Uh, we were coaching the women, and we won a national title in 2009. Um, that Coach Just didn't make hardly any of the of the, uh, of the substitutions. Like me and Coach Clark were making almost all the substitutions. At, the, at you know, and when you've got a staff that kind of knows. This is how we flow. This is how we do it. They're all everyone's on the yeah. same page. You know, it's can you 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 have the game is so freaking fast, and you expect a head coach to see everything and to make all the adjustments 
and to be able to then think about the personnel he's got on the floor and the personnel the other team has on the floor and the special situations and do they have the right personnel for all that kind of stuff. Like, if your assistants aren't lockstep in that, it's impossible. And you have to have somebody who can talk to you like that, too. Like, yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, I remember Rick, go back to Rick a lot, like, there's one, his son, Richard, was one of the few guys that could, like, really tell him, you're, you're bleeping this up. Like, you need to, you need to make a change. And there's, like, I don't think that, I, early on, Richard, though, wasn't no, that way. No, no, no. You know? No, no, but, he, I mean, you give, we give. That's Richard where he had Willard. Credit. For 2012 and even in 2013 when he was in the stands, I think I think that there was talk. I think I'm pretty sure it was in the game against Wichita State that he had said something to him in the stands, and that's just why you need to have somebody who, who somebody who's a personality of Cal and personality of Rick that actually respects him, or that yeah. he respects. The next comment we have here: Bradshaw's terrible tonight for the few minutes he played. Ugo has turned into a monster. I, I think that's a fair statement. Uh, I mean, again, I'm not. You can't Bradshaw three minutes. What, what are you going to judge all three minutes? He had he had a block. He didn't have any rebounds. You know, I, he's getting pushed around. This is what happens. I mean, he goes. He's the guy who went in when uh, in that twelve minute mark that I was talking about when Ugo had to get some rest, but going into that under twelve timeout, and they Auburn knew they had the mismatch. They went right to the basket and they put Bradshaw in basketball jail where they got him pinned under the rim. And they scored two easy layups. So, I mean, that's just – that's what it is. Sorry, you got any text I, come in? I, I got a beer. <laughs> Sorry. 437-9680 Four, <laughs> is the text line. Again, uh, if we got nothing – we got we got any other comments going on? Yeah, what we, we got, got a few. I, I can read them off for you if you want. Uh, yeah, Because they come in it. pretty quick. Uh, Craig Blanton says, love the defensive effort by UK. Zero easy layups. We fouled them hard and made them uh, earn every shot and every free throw. It's I'm a, a big believer. Season. God gave you five fouls for a reason. You might as well use four of them. So <laughs> You're damn just, right. Yeah. Uh, it's a long season, and you uh, you get better each game to March. Look back and see when we played bad, and now how we're looking. That's really important to me. Like, how many seasons can you can you look back and think of like that have been completely turned around just by the postseason, just by what you do in March? And, well, well uh, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of fans, when we, we go back to Kentucky, was it a uh, twenty? Was it 2011 when uh, Kentucky won the, you know, got to the finals of the SEC yep. tournament, lost to Florida? They had a really kind of a 10 loss, maybe they had a 10 loss regular season, and then they made the run to the national championship game or the mm -hmm. final four. Uh, uh, 24, well, 2014, they went to the championship game. That was when they yeah, lost to right. UConn. And that was, and no one, yeah, no one thought they were going to. In 2011, though, UConn won that one too, and that was probably yeah. the one that Kentucky probably should have won there too. But mm -hmm. uh, 2014 is the year I'm talking about. That's the year that I'm thinking of where they, you know, kind of have made a surprise run to the SEC final, and uh, you know, but I, yeah, so I remember you're, that you're not wrong. I remember that uh, that Sweet Sixteen game because it uh, was the night before my birthday, and I'm <laughs> at midnight of my birthday driving home sad from Calipari doing Calipari things against Rick. There it is. Uh, Craig Titty's one game uh, with a full uh, complement of players, and that was the last game. Yeah, but, that was it. And then we really and they started it with the full complement of players, but didn't finish it with the full complement of players because that's where Mitchell got hurt, and uh, and he was out. He's been out since. So uh, they're going to need. Listen, I, this LSU team to me is, is scary. I know that their record might not be like uh, spectacular, but this LSU game Tuesday night coming off this win, going to LSU for that night late night start. LSU is very capable of, of making that game on the cats as they beat south carolina today so that's they gotta go like they need to go take care of business there and then we've got this stretch with alabama and mississippi state two easy ones hopefully against arkansas and vanderbilt at home before that monster matchup in knoxville against the volunteers <laughs> paul says cal needs to hire scotty d he's all about family and team maybe you guys will get your show back on the radio <laughs> now, they're a partner now <laughs> It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. But Bellman, playing. Bellman takes precedence over the UK post game show. That's what that's. Uh, you know, listen, I love me some Scotty D. Uh, I'll probably see him at church tomorrow. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to be at church tomorrow because I'm I'm in uh, I'm in Maryland. Sometimes I forget where I am. Right. Uh, but at the end of the day, we go back a long, long way, and um, you know, it's the reality of it is is as good of a coach as Scotty D is he's at the perfect level for where he needs to be. If he were to try to step up and he would have, he would have to adjust his 
style for it to work and for him to attract the athlete that he would need to do to compete at, at, in one of these major conferences. Um, and, uh, you know, I th think he likes being able to play kind of more of an Ivy League style. Um, so I don't see that happening. Yeah, and then Joe does his thing. Cal's not the best recruiter, a duffel bag full of $100 bills, and maybe a tractor has ever seen blue chips. I I'll mean, maybe. Respond. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know if uh, last I saw, I was like, Louisville got in trouble for that, but Kentucky didn't, so. Yeah, we did. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but not, not just that, but, like, even even so, that doesn't, that doesn't, yes, you can pay them. doesn't mean they're coming. Like, well, they're also, I mean, right now, you can pay them legally. So yeah. that's the, the other part of that, too. And, uh, you know, has that even the playing field? You know, I, at this at the end of the day, I think that it's it's an interesting concept to think that now that everybody can go out there and and pay these dudes, um, you know, now you don't. There's no reason to have the bag man or whatever else it might be. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that has happened and it hasn't happened. Uh, when I was at the Derby Classic, you see some things and you hear some things that you didn't want to see. Um, I, but it never, on my end, it never involved Kentucky. Uh, usually it was more on the uh, mid-level schools than it was on the on the top end schools because I think the top a lot of the top end schools have the attitude like you know yeah we're we're Duke we're Kentucky we're North Carolina why would we you know you should come here because we're going to give you the best chance to get in the league and so to me I think a lot more of that happened probably at the lower middle levels of the people trying to get up to a certain level um, so I have some direct knowledge of some things and but nothing that I know of has ever happened at a school that was uh, what you would consider a blue blood program or a top 10 level program. I will hold my comments. Uh, but anyway, uh, Justin, you, Joe. I mean, I mean, I mean we can, but we're, if, we're, if we're doing that, like you, you can, to I me, just it's think just, you're doing it the right way. Spiteful. I think no. Yeah. I just think they're doing it the right way. I, I, I'm not. I'm never going to say that. I think oh, that's not happening. I think it is happening. Right. I think they're just smart enough to get away with it. Is well, what now, is and happening. now, and now you can legally do it. Yeah, exactly. And but so, well, Kenny Payne doesn't need to. They, he, they come to him for other things, not NIL. Sure. He may get right. it, but he's just such a great coach. Uh, Justin Jeffries, what's up, Double J? The real question is, what do I need to do to get my face on the ESPN Louisville picture? Um, I mean, Justin, you just yeah, come on, little you you can always co-host with me. You know that. Say next love. Let's go. I'll, I'll send you the link, Double J. You hop on. I'll, I'll let I'll edit that picture. <laughs> Tiger Tiger Tech taking it over. Let's go. Okay. So, what else we got? Uh, Cal needs to Facetime Jasper Johnson from the locker room, or je or, or his jet on the way to Indy. Who the hell is Jasper? Do, do I know who that I, is? I'm not sure. Who, I don't know who Jasper Johnson is. So, Mark, not really. <laughs> Their name is Mark Poop 680. <laughs> <laughs> so is that Blanket Baker? Is it, <laughs> it might be. Blank, a little, okay. a little rummage. You, you found him? Oh, Jasper Johnson's a recruit. There we go. He's a, okay. you know, I've stopped. I really kind of stopped following the recruiting side. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know. At the end of the day, like, you know, you, Kentucky has this good recruiting class. You get guys like uh, Reed's a surprise. Dylan Hamps pans out. DJ's been fine. And then they. You know, the Edwards and Bradshaw have been a disappointment. You know, you're not going to know until you get the dudes here. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what's going to take. And again, going back to the are you interested or are you committed idea behind the program with the national title, these guys have got to be interested or committed and succeed in college basketball. And they don't know what that takes until they get here. You know, they just do not know what it's going to take for you to be committed to being a successful college basketball player. And especially when you're living on your own for the first time. And you got lots of distractions, and I don't know if you've been to Lexington before, Justin, but there's there's not there's some nice things to look at that walk it's around. Not bad. Pretty, In my experience, it's not know. bad. So uh, you know, at the end of the day, if you're a college kid and you got all those distractions going on around you, and you don't, you know, it's you've got to be you've got to be committed. And that's not me challenging anybody on this Kentucky team's commitment level. That's just uh, I, I I just think that it's it's a whole different deal. So. Double J says it's done, so I sent him the link. We'll see if he comes in. Uh, let's Please be ahead. sober. Please be sober, Justin. Uh, you you want him sober? Well, do, he, all right. He, okay, sober he's enough. Not, he's not Strebel. He's not Strebel, which we got to take Insta task. Uh, Did you catch the last post? Was it the last post game show, right? Or was it the one before? Well, Gonzaga is the one that Strebel had to fill in for me because I was flying yeah. back to California. 20 minutes? 20 minutes of Strebel. Can I? That's all we got. 20, that was minutes? it? 
Yeah, it was 20 minutes. And, like, I mean, he he performed. Well, that's because Bellman played. Play. Yeah. Bellman like, played after that, though, right? Do we? Uh, it'd be amazing if we had, like, another, pl you know, platform that they could hop on. Like continue, this? Yeah, like this. To continue <laughs> a post-game show. It'd be amazing when you get James Strebel doing James Strebel things. When Rig is being well, rigged, that's what I need. Put I just know that, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I've been tired. I, since I Since going to California last weekend. I've been in Boston, thought I was going to get snowed in in Boston. Came, I came back for the Super Bowl to watch my Niners lose. And then I go to Boston for a couple of days. I'm back for two nights. I get to sleep in my bed two nights before, you know, taking off on this college trip. So there, I've put in a lot of miles. Flight, planes, no trains and automobiles. Tomorrow, though, I think I get on a train. I might get on a train tomorrow for a little bit. So we'll just knock it all out. There you go. Well, while we're waiting on Jeffries, let's see what uh – Couple of prostitutes jokes. Yeah, I got that. I see that. Okay. Um, about Louisville. Give Justin. Listen, we got. We're gonna turn Justin into a UK fan where he should be anyway. So. Man, I. I it's just. It's just better over here. I mean, listen. I've been on both sides. I graduated from Louisville. I was part of Denny Crumb's staff. It's. It's better over here. Just. Were you UK fan then? Over. Yes, I was. Okay. And, uh, but. Uh, and I was out at, at first. You know, I kind of went to Louisville out kind of necessity, and. Uh, you know, I don't need to get in the whole story. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this. And then I got on campus like, oh, everybody around here is a Kentucky fan. Even in the athletic department, everybody's a Kentucky fan. And I was open about it on the, you know, being on the uh, being in the around the basketball guys. And mm -hmm. they went up there and they beat Tubby uh, the year Tubby won the national title. And they came back and they gave me all yep. kinds of hell about it. And they threw me in the shower and dumped ice on me. You know, all good fun. And maybe do um, that to you? Maybe was a freshman on that team. Oh, Okay. But he, he so, performed pretty well in the game, right? I, wanna, where, where, where am I, wrong? I, I believe he did. Yeah, I think I, I believe think he, he did. Out. And uh, you know, so there was there was some good times there. Yeah. You know, first. So, I mean, I get it, but you know, how frustrating was, it is that yeah, that I mean, that's how university for so, for so many times has been corrupted by having a lot of UK people working. <laughs> well, I don't know if there was a lot of UK you people there. Fans. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anyway. We're not going to bring you the John Calipari press conference allowed tonight, but if we did, it would be uh, presented by the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety. Whether you walk, pedal, or drive, or take a train, plane, whatever it is, let's share the road safely. Share the road, Kentucky. Do you all typically bring it? Do we? No. Oh. No, we, jo <laughs> we joke about it every time. Okay. And like, I think the last game I said, we're not going to bring you the Bruiser Flint press conference or something like that. So, um, the UPS Jobs Top 25 scoreboard. Let's go there uh, real quick again, uh, just in case Justin does jump on. Um, we got, of course, the big one, Kentucky beating Auburn tonight, 70-59 to down at Auburn to improve to 8-4 and four in SEC play. And that four loss is the magic number right now to stay in play for one of those buys uh, in the SEC tournament. And they've got a couple chances going up against uh, Tennessee and Alabama still to really kind of maybe make up some headway there. And let's see if they can get one of those buys at the SEC tournament. Uh, we have Iowa State knocking off Texas Tech tonight, the 10th-ranked Cyclones at home, 82-74. to Alabama puts it to Texas A&M at home. And Tuscaloosa, they win 100-75. to uh, Proved 10-2 and two and still stay on top of the SEC. Virginia wins a Virginia-style game. The 21st-ranked Cavaliers beat Wake Forest 49-47. to Creighton goes on the road and survives a game with Butler. They went 79-57. to um, Houston hosts the Longhorns. The Fighting Ralph Sampsons wins 82-61. to The 16th-ranked Dayton Flyers hold off Fordham at 80. North Carolina, the most overrated team in college basketball. Uh, the ACC is terrible. They shouldn't even get an automatic bid. 96-81, to they beat Virginia Tech. Duke holds off to beat Florida State on the road, 76-67. to The Fighting Mark Popes of BYU get knocked off tonight. Uh, they lose on the road to Oklahoma State, 93-83. to Iowa gets the upset over Wisconsin, 88-86. to We already talked about the absolute whooping that happened in stores Connecticut with UConn winning 81-53 to over the fourth-ranked Marquette Golden Eagles. South Carolina gets upset against LSU at home. This is an at-home loss. So now South Carolina and Kentucky have the exact same number of losses in SEC play. Uh, Kentucky's played one less SEC game than South Carolina. LSU knocks off South Carolina 
64 to 63. The Jayhawks of Kansas go on the road and beat Oklahoma. I cannot figure out Oklahoma in the least. They have their six and seven in conference play, and they were well now they won't be ranked next week, but they were hanging on at 25th. 67 57 is that score. Illinois knocks off Maryland 85 80, 14th ranked Illinois. Uh, number eight, Van, or Tennessee beats Vanderbilt 88 to 53. Baylor, number 12, uh, knocks off West Virginia 94-81. And Indiana State gets ranked, and then they've lost a couple since then. They lose to Southern Illinois today, 74-69. to And I feel like we've got somebody on the phone. Is that true? Is that you yes. making all that noise? No, it's it's not me. Justin Jeffries is here now. That is his – well – he was here, and now he Come keeps on, JJ. going in and out. Uh, as okay. soon as he decides, oh, there he goes. Okay, now we'll try to just let him go. All right, Justin Jeffries joins us now. Can everybody hear him? This is the future of the Kentucky football po- uh, post-game show right here. will be me and JJ at some point, I'm pretty sure. Double J, you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We got you. Unfortunately, I can't hear you guys, but I'm but I'm I'm watching the lips move, so I know that you can hear me. Okay, actually, I got you. Yeah. Give me give me one sec. Give me <laughs> one sec. I just hopped on here so can that you hear us uh, now? so that I can get my face on like the the ESPN 680. I probably sound like I'm in a bathroom. This is hot garbage. I apologize, fellas. Um, <laughs> and like I said, I know I can't hear you. I see your lips moving, Mike. I see you moving. And I'm looking down in the corner, and I see Sofro is so Sofro is so beside himself, and I don't know what happened, but it doesn't matter what happened. I uh, appreciate you guys having it on. Uh, you guys are phenomenal. Uh, I was in the restroom watching you guys, and it worked out great. That's when I was um, dropping a deuce. That's when I was. Uh, I hope, I was, I I hope was that's what you're Look at Sofro taking the drink from the beer, like. That makes my that my, like my mouth is is salivating. I see it. Yeah, a little dose of keys. I love it. I love it. Listen, Mike, I'm so sorry. I know this sucks. I'm, I'm I apologize. But I I I wanted to get on here because Sofro's been begging, not begging. That's not the right word. But he's been he's been asking and asking. And I'm like, I got something going on. I got something going on. Well, now I'm sitting in uh, stairwell D in Indianapolis. Um, of my hotel room, as uh, as I'm looking at your all's beautiful faces, uh, and I and I got to watch the cats win. Let's be honest here, um, you know, to to get a dub without Trey White playing, I mean, that's got to be huge, especially for the confidence. Confidence for the guys, especially for the big boys, has got to be crazy. And I, I I'm seeing faces moving and stuff like that. This is trash. But anyway, uh, but but. Thank you guys for having me on. I'm going to try to come back in. I know this is trash. I know this is hot garbage. I apologize. Uh, but I'm going to try to get back in to where I can hear you guys. All right. Give me, give me a second. We'll work with him and see if we can figure this out. He said, he said Trey White, by the way, which uh, that's pretty funny. All right. We'll talk about what to watch for on uh, presented by Cox's and Evergreen Liquors, your go-to liquor store. There's only one top 25 game left to go tonight, and it is the big matchup uh, in Arizona. Arizona will host Arizona State. That game should be tipping off here uh, in about a minute. So uh, Arizona fifth ranked. I think they're dangerous. Uh, we'll see kind of what kind of comes out of that. As far as the SEC goes, and or let's see, talk about the uh, top 25 games tomorrow. you got Florida Atlantic going on the road to play South Florida. And Purdue is going to, on the road to play Ohio State, uh, the second ranked Purdue Boilermakers. SEC scoreboard real quick. And we're going to get to it. And we've got uh, going on. We've got Ole Miss and Missouri at half. Those 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 fighting beards of Ole Miss are losing to Missouri, who have not won a freaking conference game at home. Uh, Ole Miss is a smokescreen. You know, uh, you know, just, what, what, you don't know. You know what's happening is right now he's just his eye. He's distracted. He knows what he no. has coming to him in the next couple months. Listen, he's excited if you about want, it. you will become Georgetown. Quicker than anything, if you all, if that's the route Louisville goes, I'm just that it would be the biggest mistake out there. You know, just just remember I said that when it happens, Sofro. Just remember. I, I still uh, think he's the best coach in the market, but you know that's fine. It, it, can, it, it can't be worse than Kenny Payne. Nothing can be worse than Kenny Payne. The Fighting uh, Golden's down in Florida knock off Georgia on the road, 88-82, and Mississippi State beats Arkansas, 71 to 67. 
again, my whole take with Golden is that you get a dude who's in his 30s that could be there for 30 years, who could build a program, who's an excellent X and O coach, who game plans to me as well as anyone in the SEC. And you get him around, uh, you get him a name brand, and you let him find a couple guys that can help him get some talent. That guy can coach, man. That guy can coach. So we'll see. Uh, we'll. <laughs> We're not gonna. Say uh, it. It's not gonna happen. But yes, maybe, maybe yeah. not. I don't know. Maybe uh, her gets fired, and I'm the new athletic director of UL. Maybe I'm already in talks. You don't know this. <laughs> maybe yeah. Maybe you you and her had a conversation. Remember, maybe you just have a conversation with him. Maybe he's, he goes right. to you. That's that's what he, he, he does. Yeah, yeah. And he has, he's a Saint Albert dad. Is that right? I think he's over. He's over. I can't remember what parish they're at. So is he? I, um, I would and, hope he has a guy by now. That he's, I would hope he has a guy honed in on right now because year three ain't happening. It's time you gotta you gotta lock it up. Like Trilly Donovan said, you're you're behind the eight ball. You got Ohio State over here. You got all these other coaches getting by. DePaul. By the way, there's another. That's another great example because how many people would have wanted Ohio State's coach a couple years ago? There were a lot of UK fans telling you U of L that they should hire him. Right. <laughs> Strebel and Tarullo saying that uh, Holtman was the guy. And, and uh, speaking of that, would it be terrible to go with, you know, with a young guy, another young guy that has a little bit of like local game, and go get Preston Spradlin from Moorhead? Wait, is he the coach there? Yeah. See, I just, I'm sorry. No, no, no. We can't. We can't do this. We, we can't. Louisville can't do this. Like a team of of what Louisville is. Cannot go after you and I. You and I totally disagree on what I would want out of an ex coach. I don't want someone who's been to the top of the mountain. I want someone so hungry to get to the top of the mountain that they can't see straight. The top, the person who's made it to the final four and flamed out because they had a good team and they've been there once and experienced it. That's not the guy I want. Okay. I want I want the dude who's showing that man. I got tons of talent, and I'm like hungry, hungry, hungry to get there. Yeah. And um, I, I, I think there's. You know, I first off, I think the whole like the whole thing about people getting upset about hiring campaign because they had no head coaching experience. Well, that happens all the freaking time. There's all kinds of guys, that, and they still do well. You yeah, know, but not at not at well, Arizona, no, wait, not at Duke, wait, not wait, at North Carolina. Here's the scenario. Here's the difference, though. You don't hire a guy who's been two years out of basketball completely at this level at the college game. You're, he's in the NBA. He's well, in the NBA. Yeah, he's in the NBA. That doesn't mean that translates to you can go in and and, and coach and be a, be a head coach. And, and no, that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get I get why you're I get I get why you feel the way you feel you do, but I just I'm sorry. Louisville basketball. No, nobody of Louisville's capacity should be hiring a guy who has never been a head coach somewhere. Like now, now. Like I, would you? I think Arizona's very happy they hired Tommy Lloyd. I think yeah, I think he's a great coach, but he was also doing this under under Mark Few during their be, during the best stretch they had. What's Kenny Payne been we just, doing? We just we just we we just talked about how Kenny Payne was under John Calipari, who's the, one of the top coaches in but he was always thought of, he wasn't ever thought of as like as an actual coach though. He was thought of as as the bag man, who that didn't even pan out. He couldn't even do that right. Well, okay. Why are we doing this in the Kentucky Post Game Show? Here's the thing. Because it's pretty Payne, much over. We're pretty much over you're, you're at this right, point. You're so. right. At this point, we can just do whatever. But like Kenny Payton yep. to me was, I mean, if he's not a plant, then he is the the dumbest person on the planet. Like if he's, he's not, not if he's a plant. A, I, I don't see a lot of evidence <laughs> proving that he's not. Look, look, okay. <laughs> look at the way he the only plant. The only plant and, that we've ever put in is, is Howard Schnellberger. That's the only plant that we've ever had at Louisville is Howard Schnellberger. So. I'll take one of those. I'll give me another one. Okay. Give me another one of those. Um, Jeffrey yeah, says, I mean, Mike, my, man, my bad. I couldn't hear, and I bleeped up. He said Trey, he said Trey White instead of Trey Mitchell. He just say Trey White, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if you make it on the, on the new board. <laughs> Double check. <laughs> <laughs> I was just mad that I missed it because I was in – California last week. I missed the ESPN Louisville uh, like celebration party thing. So, well, you know, that makes two of us. I uh, I had to miss it, but mine was more because of my kid got sick. So I heard it was a lot uh, of fun though. It was a really nice little get together. People, hopefully we, hopefully they have that again. Because uh, I I didn't. I was asking them, is it a de facto Christmas party? <laughs> it's February, but like it's been like two years since they've had a Christmas party, and they used to do it every January. But it's been, it's been. I think Jason Anderson left, and they were just like, "We're done. We're, we're no longer doing this. It's fine." 
Um, anybody else? People just going on about Kenny Payne. Kenny Payne is not good. Kenny Payne will come back to UK after finishing the ruination of U of L. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, it happen. I don't think happen. So. You don't want him back? No. No, I don't really want him back. I mean, he, so. He's the big man whisperer. He would is develop he? your big men. You'd be every it'd be golden. Your your defense yeah. would skyrocket. Anyway, uh, I don't I, I don't know about that. I think Kenny Payne. I mean, if he's smart, he'll just go retire with his millions of dollars <laughs> and just enjoy his time with his family. At that point, yeah. Anyway, um, what's the next up for Kentucky? Who they play? LSU Tuesday night, and so it is a late start, and I think we'll have the full post game show back. Uh, imagine we'll go on around 11 15 or so and uh hopefully talk about the cats getting a win over lsu uh getting a little three game win streak would be huge right now going into the stretch of games that they got uh we i remember we were posting uh going into this eight game stretch that uh that that now they have six games left you know we were kind of predicting what the record was going to be and i i said four and four uh, I think Ince was three and five, given the way that they were playing, and they start this thing off with two wins, uh, and one for sure really quality win. And I definitely think the Ole Miss was a game where like people like thought they you know you're going to go win, you're going to beat Ole Miss, and they're not maybe not as good as what people thought they were. And but at the end, you know, you had this little bit of doubt, <laughs> hinge of doubt in the back of your head, and they're able to get both those this week. So they got a perfect – now next week, you know, LSU again in Alabama. That Alabama game at Rupp, uh, everybody needs to show up for that, man. And I, UK fans have been showing up at home. They've been trying to get this team going. They want to believe in this team. You know, they, they know that Bluegrass Jesus Reed Shepherd's ready to go. I mean, we, we – this is this is the thing, man. The Reed Shepherd is uh, – is, you we can talk about – but Cats fans are going to show up and cheer for one of their own. Yeah. And there's nothing, there's nobody more one of their own than Reed Shepard. And uh, at the end of the day, that Alabama game in Rupp is one of those things where can Kentucky, I don't think Kentucky can get, play themselves. I mean, beyond going perfect the rest of the year, I don't think they can play themselves into a top four seed. No. Uh, yeah. But you can put yourself in a lot better position, at least, if you can finish hard, if finish well uh, and beat Alabama. You know, win that Mississippi State, Arkansas, Vanderbilt game, and you might be able to go in that Tennessee game. And when we thought four and four and three and five, right now six and two looks really likely. Seven and one is very possible. And who knows? Maybe they can get that eight and zero, uh, and and start to look like they're playing their best basketball going into March. I mean, that's the Rick Barton special, right? You go into Tennessee, Tennessee at the end of the season. He no, lays it's the only clunker. The, the one of the tournament, the tournament ones. That's his, that's where he lays the clunker. Well, that's you know. true. I felt like he usually gets near the end of the season. You start seeing signs of it, though. But um, okay. why don't you all hire Jerry Stackhouse? That's the, that is that's the choice right there. Go get Jerry Stackhouse. <laughs> exactly. That, that that's the only one I had that was a joke. I actually think yeah. that Preston Spradlin or uh, or Golden would be a great hire. I'd rather have Golden though than both Beard and Musselman, and that's not that's very very true. That's uh, that's an interesting one. I have to look at that. There's a couple that like are off the beaten path that people have brought up that I'm kind of interested to see. I kind of feel like they're, they're kind of zoned in on one or two guys though. And I kind of feel like, I, I think, I think people are actually you have inside knowledge on that. I, I, yes. I, I okay, do. You better have, you better have really good inside knowledge on that one. I, I, if it's I the two guys that they've been floating around. I, I feel good about my, I feel good about my source. We'll say that. I'll just leave it at that. I'm not, I'm not doing the, I'm not doing the, you know, everybody. I guess I put out a tweet. Are today. you tracking flights yet? Are you are you starting no. tracking flights? <laughs> no tracks. No flights are being tracked yet. Should but we start I, spreading rumors that people are working with me? And like, uh, as far yeah. as a real estate agent, that I, hey, did yeah. you hear that Gandolfo was out showing houses to yeah. to uh, to Drew's wife, to Scott Drew's wife, <laughs> Richard Bettino? Richard Bettino was out with Gandolfo, and they're, they're, they're looking at houses. Fences. They're mending fences. Did you see Gandolfo and Richard Bettino in Mockingbird Gardens looking at houses? That yeah. actually is my take, though. My take kind of is that's not what that's not what I was saying about you know that's not my source thing. But my hey, take seriously, would, be, would you want Richard here? I think so. I think if, if all the rumors were true about like Louisville can't hire anybody, Louisville has no money, Louisville can't do this, Louisville can't do that. If you think like when you talk about that level of coach, and you want to go look at a guy, hey, if you want Louisville basketball to try to extend an olive olive branch with Patino again, maybe try to mend those fences with Rick. 
you hire a son, right? And I think, and I also think Richard's a guy who doesn't seem as, he doesn't seem like his dad. Like, I don't think he would hold the, you know, I don't think he'd be like, no, I'm not talking to Louisville because of what happened with my dad kind of thing. I, I think he's a little bit different. He's a different different cat, if you will. I, I, I kind of think like, if you if you want to make me happy, myself, Justin Sofro, if, if, if you wronged me and you gave my son something, that would that would make things better. You know what I mean? I feel like hire my son. That would that would that would actually that would that would do a lot to rectify that relationship, to mend it a little bit. I don't know if that would be a good hire. I mean he's he's only he's, 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 I think he's only got like five losses right now. He's he's, he's doing all right. They're, they're like, doing well. They're doing great. I remember I mean, back in the day perfect. that was the all, the talk was <laughs> Rick's gonna retire and you're gonna have Richard. And now it's like hey. now that looks that looks pretty good. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. All right, yeah. Today <laughs> compared to Kenny. A um, couple <laughs> other comments that I know you got to get out of here. Probably um, James says this obviously shows how much they missed uh, a do at a And M and at South Carolina. He's a difference maker, and I and that's very true. And I think that's you know that's a big part of the defense. And you know uh, he he wasn't like uh, incredible tonight, but he does bring energy and he helps them uh, just live to a play to a certain standard on the defense side of the basketball. So. Uh, and that's one thing I'm going to hold on to is like we did have a do uh, mo- a lot of those SC losses were either without a do or a do was just coming back. And uh, and he I'll tell you what, man, w- one of the things that we've been consistently talking about on this postgame show is that Kentucky needs to start playing angry. like They need to start attacking the rim like they want to hurt somebody. I do had a couple throwdowns tonight, including that one handed alley oop that. It's gonna be on Sports Center top ten. Uh, you know, he 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 can be a different and those are momentum shifting type plays, right? I mean, that's that's when you either totally deflate a team at home or you bring you just your home crowd if you're playing at home, then the crowd just erupts and goes crazy. So uh I like that. You know, I I, I do think that that is a a big piece there that it's easier to if they don't have Trey Mitchell, if, even though they're not the same position of just of what they do for the culture of the guys on the floor. Having having a do theory out there. Um, Craig says, "Was the Auburn crowd crazy tonight? I wish UK's crowd it, it was, was crazy. Yeah, well, that they they were loud, and, and I'll tell you what, that's why Kentucky had to go out and get off to a great start, and just had to minimize the impact that that crowd had. And they did it. Number one, K- Kentucky did a great job of that. And I will also say that uh, out, you know, did you see what the price, the ticket prices for that thing were going for? No, I didn't. It was three hundred. It was three hundred dollars if you want to get in standing room only. It was a thousand dollars if you wanted a seat. Are you serious, God? Could you imagine yeah. wasting that much money and getting beat by double digits at home and not really being that competitive at the end? I mean, I guess I've seen that with Louisville, but but like, but, I mean, at the same time, uh, they did not. They, you know, they were they were in the game. Like as soon as the Auburn showed a little life at all, they were ready to explode and, and keep that going. It was it was a really good atmosphere, and uh, you know, I, I think that's one of the things too that Kentucky showed this mental toughness. Mm-hmm. They showed physical toughness and mental toughness tonight in a ball game when uh, you know they were their backs were up against the wall and the, you know they they definitely were in a hostile environment. I do want to give some credit to, and you know me being a Louisville guy I'm not I'm not I'm not a conference guy if that makes sense but what do you mean you're not a conference guy like I'm not a, a ACC guy if that makes sense like I, oh. I, I I've always think the cheering for your conference thing stupid or the like rivaling over with the conference part is kind of dumb to me but one of the things I want to say though is like talk about I like, do theory by the way eight rebounds 14 points so damn they're pretty freaking good all right go yep well I just want to say like to me the culture switch, or maybe it's just a change in the SEC now in basketball, has been phenomenal to watch. Because you remember what ten years ago, these games—it's crickets. Like it's like it's like we're watching, you know. Well, a, I thought a, even a, when Auburn, when Auburn built this stadium, because uh, mm-hmm. this stadium is not really that old, I thought they were make, taking a huge risk. Yep. And, um, and number one, Bruce Pearl's been able to keep that program at a pretty high level since they built that facility. Mm-hmm. And the Auburn fans have, have uh, really embraced basketball. And at the same time, the SEC, what's happened is they got a little influx in uh, in football money. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know if you know this, but the SEC network, the SEC football brand's pretty pretty profitable. Oh, is uh, it? And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not bad. Uh, maybe like the ACC should get a, a good network or something like that that would do something. <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah, but. Uh, 
the SEC presidents and athletic directors made a commitment to not just take all that money and throw it into making football better, mm -hmm. but to being better across the board in other sports, but specifically in men's and women's basketball, because that's the other sport that's on television, right? Yep. I mean, um, and that commitment has shown up. And, you know, the SEC was like, we could be known as the great football league or we could be known as the best sports league in America. And let's not get it wrong. I mean, we see what's going on in college sports, Justin. And, you, you know, I know you're a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> the SEC is doing everything right that they've got to do to position themselves that if they ever had to break away from the NCAA, oh, I'm that they it. could have a, a total standalone brand that – TV companies would love to air. I mean, sure, let's SEC wants to break off for the NCAA and, and everybody's yep. playing this 12-game football schedule all in conference uh, or basketball or whatever else. And they're they are they are basically putting themselves in a position that if the NCAA falls apart, that they don't need the NCAA. I have thousand I, I think them the Big Ten's maybe kind of doing that. They're close, mm -hmm. but I don't think anyone's done it like the SEC's done it. No, I a thousand percent agree with you. The more and more I, I look at uh, the way things are going, the way they're headed, especially you look at Big Ten and SEC, my take has been for a while that you're just slowly going to see these conferences, maybe not even that slowly, maybe maybe it'll be quicker than you think, but these one day, these conferences are very much could turn into, you're going to look at club sports. You're going to look at like, like, look at Italian soccer and places like that where these leagues can become their own league and then they can, they can uh, separate from the NCAA and then players can really honestly go, just go away from the, you know, we have to play school, <laughs> the Cardale Jones. We don't have to play. We don't have to play school anymore. Like they can literally just focus on their craft, their game. That, that's, that is their career. And that's what they can do. They have no. these, uh, well, the clubs, and we the, like, um, we like yeah, guys who are going to be professional doctors uh, focus their school on becoming a professional doctor. Yep. So why can't they major in basketball? Yeah. Yeah. Why I, not? Yeah. And that's, I mean, you see it, like I said, you look in Europe and you see these kids do it where they go to these, um, what, what are they called? Soccer, uh, academies or whatever, right? Yeah, they're, they're called academies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah academies. And they, they just, they enroll in those academies and that's what they do from, you know, 10, 11, 10, nine, whatever however years old. And they're just focusing on that. And like, sure. it's, yeah, and then there, there's some educational benefit. I'm sure a base level, so they're not <laughs> completely useless. But their main goal is their their, their craft, their sport. And well, I, think I actually think when see. you actually do that, when you do that, though, Justin, like you actually force people to be realistic about where they're at. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? You're going to commit that much the, to a sport or whatever else. You better take a really good look. Because I think there's a little bit too much of, of them being allowed to play school that – we got these, you know, these kids who think they're they're much better basketball players than what they think they are, right? And and yeah, and they should be playing at a higher level than they are, and whatever else. And at some point, you'd be had to be like, you know what? I'm 18, 19 years old. I'm trying to get to this, make a living playing basketball. It's not happening. I better have a backup plan. And then it kind of puts the onus on them to go take care of their education on their own. Absolutely. You know? I mean, yeah, uh, I, I'm just kind of excited for that. I think. I think you could really see. I don't. I don't know. I think. I think just in general, um, the way things are handled. I mean, we have so many complaints and so many issues with the NCAA, and then you can kind of clear that out and just really focus on what. I mean, I don't want to just say what the fans, but what the coaches and what the fans want to see out of these sports, and have that really come uh, to fruition instead of just having all the politics that are aligned with the NCAA and their I'll backwards tell you rules. All right, you're gonna let me uh, let me promote one thing before we yep. get off here. Go ahead. So uh, I don't know. Have you seen that I've been uh, I've been asked to do Louisville's version of Dancing with the Stars? I ha oh yes I have yes I have. Go ahead. I, okay, I did see you post that on like Facebook or something. So uh, it's called Let's Dance Louisville. It supports the uh, Sandifer Dining Hall at the Cathedral of the Assumption. This one fundraiser feeds like, no, it doesn't. This doesn't matter where you are, blue or red, either politically or athletically. Uh, everybody can agree that we need to help feed the hungry population in our communities. Uh, this one fundraiser feeds 65,000 people for the year. And uh, so if you like, you know, I, I don't know if people know this or not. Actually, uh, I do this for fun. 
um, uh, Phil Baker's sent me the little timesheet to fill out, and I just haven't done it yet because I think it's – I just like having fun with it. One of the best ways that you guys can support me out there is to go to lessonsluble.com, uh, find the 2024 dancers. You'll, you, you vote for me by donating. That's all it is. And if you can donate for me, that'd be awesome. This I know the power of this station of what they've done in other amazing charities with toy drives and and all kinds of stuff. From toy drives to pick six tickets, uh, don't throw your way your money away on a pick six ticket with Blanket Baker. Uh, go ahead and and just donate that money to Let's Dance Global Twenty Twenty Four and help me. Right now, I'm in the lead. Right now, and for fundraising, so for and I really haven't like been like over the top promoting it. That's awesome. So you know, I just need some people to help get, you know feed the help me feed the hungry. That's all we're trying to do. I'm probably not going to win the dance part, but if I can win the fundraising part, I'd be really excited. <laughs> definitely. So definitely, definitely go out there and support him right now. Uh, if you could, maybe we can put in a link out somewhere. Maybe we can put it on the Twitter account and share all yeah, that yeah, yeah. if we haven't already. So that way we can get people. Now, now, I haven't asked them. ESPN Louisville to do anything on this part yet. So I, we're, you know, maybe down the road, but at the end of the day, the, uh, I keep on saying like, if I can get 4,000 people to give 25 bucks, yeah, and that means I got that, and it really starts with one person giving twenty five bucks, and then convincing three of their friends to give twenty five bucks. You know, that's a hundred thousand dollars that we just raised to feed the hungry. And uh, I just know that every single time I see someone, you know, at, at a street corner or whatever else, and I'm, I'm really conflicted about what to do in those situations. Yep. Um, if I can get the money in the hands of the people that know how to serve that population, I feel pretty good about it. So yeah. I work downtown in downtown Louisville uh, every day, and you, you see it pretty heavily and that's just one of the things too in like being able to support that way and donate because i don't know if you've i mean i know you you definitely probably do but like if you try to help personally sometimes it's hard because like you try to you have to connect with them and they they're, they're not always i mean there's a reason that they probably are in the position that they're in uh, where people they they can't trust people a lot of the time so definitely that really helps so that way the people who they can trust and the people that they can uh, go out there and really do the best job out there we'll, we'll take care of it and take care of them all right guys uh that's it again we'll be back tuesday night uh when the cats take on lsu thanks for listening and go cats are you playing us out all right there we go <laughs>